final test, what you're going to do, final assessment, what you're going to do. Test is going to be online in person. If you are a student with accommodation and you want your accommodation to be used, you need to know, let me know now. I mean today, not tomorrow. I need five days in advance to book the test center for you. So if you want to do it in test center, you have to tell me now. If you don't, then I won't be able to book your space in the test center. Then you have to do it with us. That's number one. Number two, the first I'm going to do all the threatening stuff. Like I'm going to kill you if you do this. I'm going to tell you all those things. Uh, so I'll send you that agreement thingy as usual that you have to say I agree before you can actually see the test. And that agreement will have everything that I'm going to tell you now too. So it's going to tell you exactly what the questions are going to be and what we're going to do. So you're going to have it in there. Also, for all those people who didn't submit the questions in a proper format and I remarked it for you, for all those people, it's not going to happen for final test. For final test, if you don't submit your code properly, I'm not going to mark it. It's going to go zero, and by the time you see the answer, you've got to get an F in your transcript or whatever the mark is going to be, okay? So uh, be careful. And five minutes before the test ends, I'm going to tell you, five minutes to the end of the thing, copy whatever you have now and then continue so you don't lose anything, okay? Again, that's the case. If anything goes wrong, in the test at the end, in like horrible things happen, you need to let me know right after the test. Okay? That's that. The, I don't know if you're going to have access to your email or not. I'm not 100% sure. I don't think you will be because everything is going to be blocked out of Seneca, outside of Seneca. So you won't be able to go to your email. So as soon as I close the, the, the test is over, as soon as the test is over, you're going to send me a copy. Try to email me the copy of the file you have. Remember, I told you with your notepad, you create a file. You email that to me, just in case, OK? Immediately after, like a minute after, the email should come. If it's five minutes after, it's not valid anymore, OK? Immediately after the test, as soon as I say test is done, I close the, I open the internet, immediately you email the, the thing to me. If you think any, anything went wrong with your test, Other, if, if, you're, if you see everything's good, you don't need to do that. Um, uh, the, the, um, so what I'm going to do uh, when I'm uh, actually setting uh, up the test, uh, it's going to be like this. So you are only allowed to open Internet Explorer and Notepad++. These are the only two applications that can run on your computer. Everything else will be blocked. No Firefox, no Chrome, none of those will work. Okay? Only Internet Explorer. Uh, can somebody open the Internet Explorer so I can take a look at it to make sure that it's fixed? Open IE? Uh, edge, I mean. Sorry, Edge, not Internet Explorer. Edge. Yeah, it's fixed. You know that Edge now comes with Copilot at the top. You know that, right? So I asked that removed. Okay, so, and everything, all Internet, all, everything outside will be disconnected. So you only have two applications allowed to running, run on the thing. One is Notepad, the other one is Microsoft Edge. And, uh, and that's it. So you need to do your authentication, and as soon as your authentication is done, I'll block it, okay? Because even your authentication goes outside to Microsoft and comes back. You are authenticated through Microsoft. You know that, right? Duo shmuel thingy with all the things that you're doing. So you do that. You log in. After your login is done, I'll lock the computers, and you start. Be early. Be early if you're late. It cannot extend. At the end of 100 minutes, the, the thing is closed. The, uh, the uh, what should we call it? Test is closed. If you are a student with accommodation, you have to tell me what schedule was given to you by test center. 
when are you doing your test at test center? Okay, if that's the, and then you tell me when, and I'll, and I'll set up your test to work accordingly. And the exact same things that you have over here is going to be over there. So you don't have no internet, and the same thing. You're going to have, so let's start with the questions. Question number one, 10 marks. Uh, you're going to be given a piece of code with several mistakes in it. Several mistakes. You find five of them, you get 10 marks. These five questions that you are looking at, you're going to see the number at the side of the code. So you have to tell me what line number the mistake is on, what is the mistake, that's one number. That's one mark. How to fix it, that's two marks. Okay? If you don't write the line number, if you don't follow these instructions, you know, I don't waste time. You just don't give the mark. That's easier. So, yeah, you just help that. That's it. So you have five things that you can see, and you got to tell me how to fix it. And fixing is not like we remove the line. That's not fixing. Okay? You can't do that. You have to make, you have to make the, like, how do I fix the problem? You don't compile it. So, so uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, uh, the main should work. So you cannot change the main. You should change the class as involved with the main. And, of course, it, it includes inheritance, virtuals. This code that I give you includes inheritance, virtuals, operator overloading, and all these things. Okay? So that's question number one. Question number two, 15 marks. You are tasked with completing the implementation of a C++ class called yada yada that adheres to the rule of three. Consider the following guidelines and requirements. That's the question. Okay, so I'll give you a class, and the class has pieces of code already written to it. Because I've already tested you on dynamic memory allocation in midterm, no dynamic memory allocation will be tested here. I'll give you the function for dynamic memory allocation. I'll tell you to reuse it. If you don't know how to reuse that function, too bad. Okay? So I want to see if you can do rule of three. Okay? Using the function I give you. And you're going to do it that way. Okay? So you're going to do rule of three, all the things that are supposed to be done. And I'm going to tell you, this class is supposed to uh, take part in such and such. Now, go. So you have to apply everything that that class needs. Does anything need to be virtual? Does uh, any function need to be constant? Does uh, anything need to be deleted? It doesn't matter. You have to see what this specification is and do the rule of five for the class. That's 15 marks. Oh, I, did I say rule of five? Yeah. Sorry, that's three, four, five. Rule of three. Rule of three. Rule of three. That's three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, in three, four, five, you have copy constructor, copy assignment, move constructor, move assignment, and destructor. So that's rule of five. So you move stuff too, which means if you want to give coffee to someone, you don't pour the coffee. You give the entire cup to the person, and you don't have anything after. That's moving. Makes everything faster. OK, so that's that. <laughs> yeah, you have to pour and then throw away your cup. You don't do that anymore. So I give you the class, and I'm going to say, this is the class, and I have some comments and stuff, and I'll say, additional code goes here. That's where you write your code. OK? And I'm warning you, you do anything that doesn't relate to the question, you don't get any partial marks. OK? If I ask you to overload plus operator, and you overload Boolean for me, I'll give zero to everything. OK? You need to know what you're doing. If I told you I want cake and you give me spaghetti, I don't want it. OK? Although it's delicious and I'm very hungry. 
it's not going to work for me, right? So that's that. So remember that. That's about this. And the code is done the same way. And everything's done in one file. No header file, nothing. So when you look at the thing, you just you can write everything in line. What is in line? Where the definition is inside the class, inside being out, it's instead of being outside. You can just do it that way. It's quicker, easier. You can do it that way. It's your choice. Okay? You can do it out, but I wouldn't do it. Of course, if there are helper functions to create, you have to put it outside. Please. Okay? Don't do a binary operator with two arguments as a member functions. Please. Okay? Put it outside. All right? Question number three, 15 marks again. And when I say 15 marks, let's, let, let me look at your rubric. So when I say 15, let me just, I don't have the rubric here, do I? I'll show you after it's done. OK, so it's like the 15 mark is actually 38 or 48 marks, 48 scores. And it sums up to 15 marks. It's that much in detail. So everything you write will gain a mark. OK? I'll look at it. So if, if, if uh, a, a function is supposed to return a constant reference employee and receives a constant reference employee, if you give me a function that returns an employee and receives an employee, you still get marks for the employees. But you lose marks for the constant not being there and the reference not being there. OK? You follow what I'm saying, right? So that's that. So write everything down to make sure everything is good. Now, <clears throat> assume that yada yada class is fully implemented and, the f and, functions, and functions perfectly. This is how the question begins. Assume the yada yada class is fully implemented and functions perfectly. Your task is to inherit a class from the whatever called whatever. Okay? So you're going to inherit a class out of it. This new class should add such and such to the base class. Okay? Adhering to rule of three. Derive classes with a resource. Okay, so you gotta do apply. You gotta apply rule of three again, but this time to a derived class. Okay, with all the things that it needs. Okay, again, the code for dynamic memory allocation is provided. Whatever you believe in help you if you implement the class that I told you. It's fully implemented. I'm gonna give you a base class with all the prototypes for the functions. And I'm telling you, it is complete. Assume this is fully implemented. If you implement that one, I'll get pissed off. Please read the question. Please, for heaven's sake, read the question before answering. Don't just say, oh, there's a class. Let me write it. Don't do that. It's going to waste your time. I'm giving you the base class. So the base class is fully implemented. Then I ask you to create the derived class out of it. So if that class has some function that you don't need, that you don't need in, to implement in, in the other one, you use it. Okay? It may have protected functions in there that you can use in this one. Okay? Use them. Remember that. Please do not implement the base class for this one. Requirements, reuse the provided yada yada in the class for your dynamic memory allocations, as I told you, right? The derived class is constructed using yada yada yada. So I'm telling you that. Implement the rule of three. Add such method. Assume all code is written in the same file. Before coding, Check the base class and the usage of it in the derived class and check the main function to see how it's actually running. So you look at the main function, you look at the derived class, and you see what you are supposed to do it. 
and I put in capital letters, do not complete the implementation of the above class. We assume the class is fully implemented and works perfectly. I write this over there. And at the top of that class, I'm saying, do not complete the below class because it's yada yada. So please read those things, okay? <clears throat> and then, but this one, I'm not giving you anything. The other one, I gave you a class and told you to complete. This one has the base class. You have to write the derived class from scratch. So I test you for knowing what the inheritance is and all the good stuff, right? Are we okay down to this point? So that's 15 marks. Five marks. Design an interface class that enforces such and such. Done. Okay? This should take three minutes to do. Because interfaces, as we talked about, they have no implementation. You're just writing the, the prototypes of what they are supposed to do equal to zero, right? And a virtual destructor that is equal to default, right? That's all, okay? So that's the interface you're creating. This class will serve as a foundation of creating objects that can be yada yada, okay? Requirements, again, you'd see that. So this one is only five marks. Question five. Write a template function named yada yada in a C++ template module called yada yada. This one that you are writing template is the only one that you are fully implementing as if you want to compile it. The rest of them, you don't need to include anything, nothing. For the template one, you need to have safeguards, you need to have includes, you need to have everything set up for it as if it's supposed to get compiled. And you are creating one template function. Okay? And that template function has several type names. It's not only one. Okay? So go read the templates and see the things that it accepts. Okay? So the template receives several type names. Ten marks. Okay? That does this and this. Okay, so you write the, you write the template, you write the documentation for the template, I think I give around two marks for the two marks out of ten approximately to the documentation, which is the type. Like you have three type names over there, right? This type needs that. That type needs this. So you're gonna write this one needs copy constructor. That one needs assignment operator. This one needs plus operator. That one is greater than operator. So you're gonna write all these documentation that takes that, and then you write your function, and you get your ten marks. That's the end of programming. After this. You're going to have, what is the exact output of this program? What is the exact output of this program? What is the exact output of the following program? You have these things. And then after this, you're going to have your concept question. So you have a total of six marks for walkthroughs. And you have the rest, uh, that is, I think, four marks for concept questions. Now, the concept questions that you have, I may give it to you as the same thing that you had for quizzes, like fill in the blank, and walkthroughs are all fill in the blank, blank. So it's just a small thing that it generates, and you just tell me what the output is. That's it. So that's the walkthroughs. But I may go for essay questions for the concept, like ask you exactly, like, what is a virtual? So you have to tell me. Virtual guarantees, so you have to write an English statement. So it may be that. I'm not 100% sure. We'll get to it. So, so it's either you write a small statement for me of the concept or you go through uh, multiple choices and stuff like that. And that's the end of the test. And you have 100 minutes to do this all. Any questions about final test? Fifty 